While mom was at work, I crept into her bedroom and searched her closet and all her drawers for evidence of something. I lifted up a blanket from her bed and almost had a heart attack. Hi, I'm Ming from China. See, my mom, she was the prettiest girl in our whole town. She literally won the Chinese beauty pageant five years in a row and became rich from it. Everyone would stop her in the streets to tell her how beautiful she was. Best of all, dad adored mom to bits and was always showering her with gifts. And then I was born. Oh, darling, she looks exactly like you. Same lips and cheeks. You and Ming should compete in pageants together when she gets older. Well, that's exactly what we did when I was three. Mom and I competed in duo pageants, winning every time and soaking up the glory. Then one day when I was 10, I was in my dressing room when I heard mom had to be rushed to the hospital. What's going on? Is she hurt? It's her skin. It's become completely wrinkled and inflamed. The doctors think she has a rare and untreatable condition. What do you mean untreatable? I want to see my mom now. No, Ming. The pageant is in three minutes. You'll have to go on without her. I was totally powerless, <laughs> but I did end up winning first prize. Sadly, everyone was too depressed to celebrate. Mom looked like a freaking 80-year-old with red lumps on her face. It's obvious I won't be able to compete with you anymore. Look at me. Mom, don't talk that way. You'll always be beautiful in my eyes. Oh, spare me, Ming. I don't want your pity. I felt so awful. And as I continued competing in pageants, people constantly compared me to my mom, especially my grandma. It's heartbreaking what happened to my daughter's skin. It's too upsetting for me to visit her these days. At least you look the way she used to. Their comments made me furious. I could feel mom's growing resentment. Worst of all, the tension was affecting my parents' relationship and they started fighting all the time. Finally, when I was 16, my parents divorced. Mom got custody since she'd been my primary caretaker, mostly because she'd always been driving me to our pageants. And it was then I decided I'd had enough. I don't want to be in pageants anymore, Mom. I only did them in the first place because of you. And I don't like how bitter and jealous you get every time I compete. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Why would I be jealous of my own daughter? Gee, good question. All I know is it just got worse as I got older. I quit pageants and then Mom decided to move to the US, which was a big adjustment. And as soon as we settled, she became even more more of a nightmare to be around. That's a disgusting amount of makeup. But I'm just wearing lip gloss. Well, you're wearing too much for a girl your age. Wash it off right this second. I don't understand how you can eat all those pancakes and not blow up like a balloon. Enjoy it while you can. See what I mean? Luckily, my new school became much happier than my home life. One day at school, I asked around to see if I could get an English tutor, since I still wasn't comfortable with the language. All the kids recommended the same guy, someone named Gavin. He tutors for volunteer hours, so it won't cost you anything. Plus, he's gorgeous. Every girl at school has a crush on him. Oh, well, I'm not looking to date at the moment. I just want to pass my classes. But when I met Gavin in the library that day, my heart skipped 10 beats. He looked like a storybook prince. How could I concentrate on homework with that smoke show up in my space? Are, are you okay? Your cheeks are bright red and you look adorable. I do not look adorable. I mean, can we get to work, please? My homework's not going to do itself. We sat down to study and I had to admit, Gavin was as brilliant as he was handsome, but when I started doing my math homework, he kept staring at me with his twinkling dark eyes, which made me nervous. So, are you free to go out this weekend? Excuse me? I don't want to go out at all. You're just here to tutor me. I know, but I can't fight my attraction for you. I've never believed in love at first sight until now. Seriously? Does anyone fall for your cringy pickup lines? Face it, Ming. I'm smart, I'm funny, and I have great hair. You won't be able to resist me for long. I couldn't help rolling my eyes at that. Maybe I should get a new tutor. Except that same week, I ended up getting an A on two exams. See, I don't disappoint. Now will you go out with me? Just because you helped me get a good grade doesn't mean I owe you anything. Come on, just one date? With that, Gavin pulled out two tickets from his pocket. And holy crud, they were to a Sasha concert. My favorite singer. I've been saving these for someone special, Ming. Okay, okay, I'll go. But only because I'm a huge Sasha fan. But this is not a date. The night of the concert, Gavin came to pick me up at six, but the second mom saw him, she looked furious and pulled me aside. Where do you think you're going with that boy? To Sasha's concert? I already told you I was going with a friend. Please, do you really expect me to believe Mr. Heartthrob here is just a friend? He'll break your heart, just like your father broke mine. You're not going to that concert. But Sasha's my favorite singer, and you and I both know Dad didn't do anything wrong. That comment made Mom so angry that she sent Gavin home and me up to my room. I was 
so mad I was shaking. Then suddenly, I heard a noise from my bedroom that was coming from the dog door. It was Gavin. Hey, I think I'm stuck. You're gonna have to give me a hand. Oh my god, are you trying to crawl into my room? Well, you wanna go to that concert, don't you? You said you're a huge fan, and if you can fit through this door, you probably won't get caught. My heart fluttered as he smiled up at me. There wasn't any harm in going on a date with him, was there? So I crawled through my dog door and let Gavin drive me to the concert. But soon, we hit traffic and we're running over an hour late. This is all mom's fault. It's because of her we left during rush hour. She's becoming even more of a train wreck since the divorce. Your parents are divorced? Wow, small world. Your parents are divorced too? Well, actually, mom left us a couple of days ago. She met some guy at work and is leaving my dad to be with him. Wow, I'm so sorry. It's fine. I'll get through it. Gavin didn't seem like he wanted to talk about it anymore, so I turned on the radio. The concert was nearly over by the time we arrived, but Gavin had an idea. We're parked right above the stadium. If we just sit on my car, we'll have time to hear the last song. The last song was a slow one, and I closed my eyes, swaying my shoulders in the wind. I know your mom isn't perfect, but you sure are beautiful like her. Ugh, I hate it when people compare me to my mom. Can I be my own person? I'm more than just a pretty face. I know that. You also have pretty hair. I slapped him right then, and he leaned in for a kiss. I felt fireworks between us, then suddenly Gavin pulled away. No, I can't do this. What do you mean? I don't want to fall for you. I'm scared of getting hurt. I don't want what happened to my parents to happen to us. Dude, we're in high school. I'm gonna run off with some other guy. Your parents' failed relationship doesn't mean you have to live in fear. But Gavin just said taking me to the concert was a mistake and started driving me home. I felt like such an idiot. He was the one who'd asked me out. I'd let him drag me hours away from home at midnight so I could give him a chance. Thankfully, mom was in bed when I got home and I fell asleep with no trouble. Then at around 5 a.m., I felt someone's hands on my head. It was mom. Ming, go back to sleep. At that second, I spotted a pair of scissors in her hands. What are you doing with those? I... And why are you holding a strand of my hair? Are you cutting my hair in my sleep? I just need a couple of strands. What? Why? Please don't ask questions. No, I will ask questions. You can't just cut my hair in my sleep without telling me why. Watch your tone, young lady. I'm not doing anything wrong here. You need to learn to respect your elders and bite your tongue. Mom stormed out of my room and slammed the door. She grounded me for a week, but I wasn't gonna let her scare me. While mom was at work, I crept into her bedroom and searched her closet and all her drawers for evidence of something. Then finally, I lifted up a blanket from her bed and almost had a heart attack. On her bed was an open cardboard box with a pile of my hair strands. How long had she been collecting my hair? I wasn't sure what she was going to do with it, but I knew one thing for sure. I needed to get away from her. I thought about booking a flight to China to go back and live with dad, except what if he didn't allow me to? The next day at school, I was in the library when suddenly I saw Gavin sitting across from me reading a book. Oh darn, I'd forgotten to cancel our tutoring sessions. Ming, hey. Hi, look, I won't be needing any more tutoring sessions. I'm moving back to China. Wait, what? You're leaving? Yes, and I don't know when I'll be back. You made the right choice not to kiss me at the concert. We would have both ended up hurt. Everyone I've ever been close to in my life has done me wrong or got separated from me. You were right to protect your heart, Gavin. He stared at me with sad eyes, and I couldn't bear being around him anymore. I went back to the house so I could secretly pack my bags and leave home. But that night, Mom knocked on my door. Do you have a minute? What's going on? What's in that box? Your 18th birthday is tomorrow, so I made you a present. Oh man, my birthday. I'd completely forgotten. What's this? You asked why I was collecting strands of your hair. Well, it was to make a quilt with something called Dong Tai Hair Embroidery. It's an old Chinese practice. You sew hair strands onto a piece of white silk. My grandmother started a tradition where a mother would embroider a piece, pass it down to their daughter who would continue the work and keep working on it until it was finished. Then the next daughter in line would receive the quilt as a gift. And that's you. I was shocked. Mom hated me. There was no reason she'd want me a part of any family tradition. I don't even remember the last time you gave me any presents, let alone something like this. Well, it's your 18th birthday and it's an old family practice. My mother used to tell me, back when we were close, that she wanted me to continue it. And you are my daughter after all. Mom hugged me awkwardly and and I tried to feel happy. Maybe I didn't have to run away from home after all. My mother loved me. This was proof she loved me. But I still couldn't sleep that night. I felt in my gut something was off. That mom didn't give me that blanket for the reasons I thought she did. Suddenly, I heard voices coming from the other room that sounded like a FaceTime conversation. I can't believe you made me go through all that work to give Ming that dung tie blanket. She barely even said thank you. I shouldn't even have to ask you to pass that blanket down to your own daughter. I had to offer to take Ming for the summer 
so you'd agree to do it. Like I haven't already passed down enough to her. Ming is prettier than I ever was and won more pageants than I ever did. I did what you told me. I gave her the stupid quilt. What more do you want from me? Well, that all made more sense. Of course mom hadn't changed. And of course she hadn't grown to love me. I refused to speak to both her and dad that week. And one night after mom went to sleep, I threw the Dung Tai quilt into the fire with my strands of hair and two generations worth of work. At school, I still saw Gavin, but I avoided him too. After all, I told him I was leaving the country. On the last day of the semester, I was taking my finals, but I was panicking because I didn't know any of the answers. I hadn't been able to find a tutor as good as Gavin, and now I was the last one in the exam room. I tried to calm myself with deep breaths, when suddenly some kids ran in screaming, pulling the examiner's arm. Miss Benson, someone broke into your car. And that's when Gavin walked in and sat next to me. We only have like two minutes tops. Give me your test. I'll finish it for you. No, Gavin, I can't ask you to do that. But he'd already taken my test and was filling in the answers. Why was he helping me? So, obviously, you didn't move to China in the end. No, not yet, but I still might, just to get away from everything and everybody. I don't understand, Gavin. Why did you do this for me? Because I still care about you, Ming. I know I wasn't ready to kiss you that night at the concert, but part of me regrets that. Really? Yeah. I don't want my parents' divorce to scare me away from falling in love. You told me that night, nothing is worth living in fear for. Gavin pulled me close, and I felt my heart skip a beat. Maybe you're right, Gavin. Just because my mom didn't know how to love me doesn't mean there aren't other people out there who do. You mean like me? Slow down, buddy. We're not there yet. I leaned over and kissed him right then. For the first time in ages, I walked home feeling happy. But when I entered the house, I found mom sitting in front of the fireplace, crying. I can't believe you burnt the family quilt. A three-generation quilt. It wasn't a three-generation quilt because you were never going to pass it down to me. You only did it because Dad told you to. You know what? I'm done putting up with this. I'm moving out of this house. I'm not going to live with you anymore. That summer, Dad let me stay with him in China as he promised, and Gavin and I applied to the same college and got in. Even after returning to the U.S., I didn't see Mom, and I also blocked her phone number. But one night at college, I was awake studying when I got a freaking message from mom on TikTok begging me to call her. Jesus, she created a TikTok just to get a hold of me? I finally gave in, just to get her off my back. Oh, honey, I'm so glad you called. I've been wanting to talk to you and make amends for a while. It's a little too late for that, mom. I really don't have time to talk. I have midterms tomorrow. Ming, you didn't let me finish. I've been seeing a therapist and working through my issues. I want to be better. I want a fresh start. Well, I am glad to hear you're finally getting help. I know you've been suffering for a while, but I can't just forget the way you've treated me all those years. Maybe one day I can forgive you. I just don't know when that'll be. I understand. Well, if you ever do want to start over, my home is always open to you. I love you, and I'm sorry about everything. Thanks, Mom. I've always wanted to hear those words from you. Hi, I'm Scarlett. Please like and subscribe because My Story Animated will give $1,000 to one lucky person who will subscribe in the next seven days. I've been living in this orphanage for as long as I can remember, but the warden always said I'd get adopted by someone special, and I believed that. All I had to do was wait. When I was seven, a new girl named Viola joined our home. She was beautiful with blue eyes and black hair, very different from the rest of us. Also, she was my age and we became roommates. She said she missed her parents and cried for hours. I felt really bad, so I took her for a walk around the campus, cracked some jokes, and made her laugh. She said she really liked me. But later that night at the dining hall, I saw a group of senior girls bullying her. I've never seen someone with blue eyes like this. Now, be a good kitty and lick up every drop of milk from the floor before the warden comes in. But, but why did you drop it? I was hungry. I, I was gonna have it. The girl went crazier. She spat on her face. Poor Viola looked around for help, but everyone was just enjoying the show. I couldn't take it anymore. I ran to the spot and kicked the tall girl from behind, and she fell on all fours right into the milk puddle. Now, be a good janitor and clean all this up. She stood up with fire in her eyes, but thank God the warden turned up just then, and everyone ran off. I took Viola's hand and sat her next to me. We had a happy dinner, and I also shared my glass of milk with her. From that day on, Viola and I became close friends, and soon, we were inseparable. Five years passed, and one day, the mean girl got adopted. We were so happy to see that witch go, but that's when it struck us. What if one of us got adopted? That evening, we made the strongest pinky promise ever. 
If we're ever getting adopted, we only go together. But only a few days later, the warden called me into her office and introduced me to a rich couple. Hello, dear. We asked your staff, who's the smartest kid here? And everyone said it was you. Would you like to come with us to our home? Oh, no. What we feared was actually happening. Someone was here to adopt me, but I couldn't leave without Viola. Uh, I'm sorry, but I, I can't come alone. If you want to take me, you'll have to take my friend too. The couple said they only wanted one girl, but I begged and pleaded, and they decided to see Viola too. The warden called her in, and the couple went all gaga on her. Oh, you're such a beauty. How come I didn't see you in the assembly hall? You're my girl. Let's go home. But only you, please. They were so dumb. Why didn't they understand Viola wasn't leaving without me either? We looked at each other, but suddenly, she just looked away and hugged them. Yes, I like you guys so much. I stood there in disbelief as they walked past me, just like that. She was my best friend. How could she do that to me? I was heartbroken. For weeks, I couldn't get over her betrayal, but I decided I wasn't gonna cry over it forever. I put all my heart into studying and soon was the best student in school. One day, our principal called me and said I was selected for a school swap program where I would get to attend 8th grade in a posh private school. That was so exciting! I stepped foot in the biggest place I'd ever seen. It would take me at least a month to learn the way to class. But just then, a girl blocked my way in the corridor and scanned me from head to toe. She was the prettiest girl I'd ever seen, with beautiful tan skin. Uh, I think you got confused. This is an international school, not the Department of Social Services. Want me to show you the exit? Um, no, I, I know this is a school, and I'm here on a scholarship because... Shush! Are you gonna tell me your life story now? With that, she knocked my books out of my hands and kicked them away. I was shocked, but I smiled and said, Yeah, I hate studying too. Books suck. What are you talking about? Are you dumb? Can't you see I'm bullying you here? I'm not trying to be your friend. Just get lost, you're so annoying. She pushed me aside and left. I knew being in this school would be hard, but to my surprise, all the girls were nice, except for that girl, whose name was Margot. In our first lesson, someone pranked the teacher and put gum on her chair. It was stuck to her skirt and the teacher was super mad. Just then, Margot got up and said, Miss, I know who did this, and then glared at me. Oh no, was she gonna say my name? Viola. We all turned around to see Viola, and I was completely shocked to see that it was my ex-best friend Viola, and she was sitting alone in the back. The teacher asked her if she did it, and Viola whispered a yes. The teacher yelled at her and sent her to the principal's office. During lunch, I ran to Viola to talk to her, but she completely ignored me and started walking away. Wait, Viola, I'm Scarlet. We used to be best friends, remember? But Viola just lowered her head and didn't stop. What was up with her? Just then, I heard Margot behind me. Ugh, why are you talking to that loser? Didn't you see what I did to her today? I put that gum on the teacher's chair. And when I said her name, all that dummy could do was say yes and go off to the principal like a scared little mouse. Why would you do that? Because I can. And I'm not done with her yet. Don't ask too many questions or you'll be my next victim. This was insane. Viola was in trouble and I didn't know what to do. I was still mad at her, but this Margot sounded so powerful. The next morning, I saw Viola standing at the classroom entrance, taking off everyone's jackets and smiling at them like a freaking maid, while Margot was glaring at her. I knew she was making Viola do this, but suddenly Margot spat at her own shoes and yelled at Viola. Hey, come over here and clean my shoe, and do it with your bare hands. Now, what? I couldn't believe this and Viola was actually walking over to Margot to do what she said. I couldn't take this anymore. I grabbed Viola's arm and stopped her. What's wrong with you? How can you treat someone like this? What's your problem? I told you to keep your poor butt out of this, or I will make your life worse than the hell it already is, you poor, stinky, ugly girl. I got super mad and I slapped her right on the cheek. Before she could attack me, someone else pushed me really hard and I fell down. It was Viola. W what are you doing? Don't hurt her. I was shocked. Did she just defend Margot? But 
But she treats you so badly. She's a bully. No, she is my sister. So stay out of this. What did she just say? Her sister? I was super shocked and confused. I didn't understand what was going on with these two. So I went to the principal and told her everything about how I knew Viola, her adoption, and everything happening now in school. The principal looked touched by my story and said that I was a good person. Do you know what's going on between them? Viola and Margot are both adopted. Margot was adopted first because her parents wanted a beautiful girl. But after some time, her horrible parents thought that Margot wasn't a smart kid and decided to adopt a smart girl. I guess that's when they came to the orphanage and chose you first. But being the shallow people that they are, they chose Viola for her looks. When Margot found out, she went insane. And she's been treating Viola poorly ever since. But can't you do something, ma'am, to punish Margot? Believe me, I've tried. When the other students told me how Viola was being bullied, I talked to their parents. I even threatened to expel Margot if she continued. But Viola came to me later and begged me not to do anything. She said it would only make her life worse. I couldn't believe what I just heard. All this time, I thought Viola was living her best life without me, but she'd actually been suffering. And she was too scared to stand up to that terrible Margot. I tried to stand up for Viola and defend her, but she would always tell me to leave them alone. I felt so helpless. But over time, my friendship with the principal became deeper, and I'd go to her office almost every day to talk. Then one day, the principal suddenly said, Scarlett, there's something I want to talk to you about. I've been thinking about it since the day I met you. I never had children of my own, and, well, you're amazing. So I was thinking, maybe I can adopt you. We will both be really happy, I promise. But if you don't want that, please feel free to say no, I understand. I couldn't believe what I just heard. I was speechless. But then I said, yes, yes, I would love to. And I hugged her tight. Everyone heard the news and my life was about to get so much better and some things would have to change. I was gonna make sure they would. The first thing I had to do was deal with Margot. So one day when I saw Margot eating, I approached her and poured all my juice on her head. She started screaming. What are you doing, moron? Why did you do this? Because I can and because I want to. I'm the daughter of the principal. So what? You think I'm scared? You should be. I would be very, very careful if I were you, Margot. With a warm smile, I extended my hand to Viola. This time, she took it, and we both left, leaving Margot in shock. I finally had the chance to talk to Viola alone. The first thing she did was cry so much. Oh, Scarlet, I've missed, missed you so much. I never stopped thinking about you, and I made a mistake when I left you back in the orphanage. I was never strong like you, and I just wanted to have a family to love me so badly. But it's only been a nightmare. Please, please, please forgive me. I'm, I'm so sorry, Scarlet. It's okay. It's okay for now. Hush, honey, don't cry. Everything will be okay. Calm down. Not until you say you forgive me. I forgive you, and I missed you too. Please, calm down and tell me what's going on. Do your parents know that Margot is a jerk to you? She acts very nice in front of them, but I think they know everything. They are just scared of her because she's evil. I don't want to live with them anymore. Please help me. I hugged her and calmed her down. Once I told mom about everything, she immediately contacted social services and helped Viola end her adoption with her parents. Once that was done, I asked mom if she'd adopt Viola too, and she gladly agreed. But when Margot found out about all this, she went ballistic. Hey, Viola, you jerk. How dare you say nasty things about me? I think I was too nice to you. I should have finished you off every moment I got the chance to do so. Don't you ever give up. Game over, Margot. Oh, sister, let me handle this. And with that, Viola punched Margot in the face. Don't you ever come near me again. And I have some good news for you. You're a psycho. And the court said that you will need therapy. So go get that and fix your ways. Your parents are already thinking of sending you to some horrible orphanage. And for the first time, I saw Margot looking scared. She got up and ran away. I looked at Viola and said, I love you, my